Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to start with Marilyn. Tell us, what do you think about charter schools? I think that charter schools are bad for Mississippi because they are set up in a different structure than the traditional public school. I think that the traditional public schools will eventually be destroyed in the sense that we know as a traditional public school now, based on more and more charters being opened in the state of Mississippi, because it drains the funding uh, from the traditional, already underfunded public schools. Jarvis. Um, I feel like there are a lot of families, parents that are looking for innovation. Um, they're looking for more, not necessarily choices, but uh, schools that support them and what they're looking for for their children. And we're not providing that uh, through our public school system because it's been chronically underfunded for, for decades. Uh, we've, for much of our history, we had separate school systems that, you know, my parents went to school in Yazoo County and the county was funding the private schools and the public schools up until near 1980. So we've never wow. done the investment in uh, public education. And charters, that, that it's not enough to actually make up that gap. Uh, what we really need to do is start fully funding education and allowing these districts to um, have local control and be able to innovate on their own. Well, when you talk about having school choice, do you think that's something that parents should have, an alternative public school that's going to give their children the education that they feel they're not getting in the traditional public school? Well, I don't think they've had that first choice of having a quality education in public school for most of the students in Mississippi. Um, take JPS. Um, since 2009, JPS has been underfunded by the state by close to $100 million. And that's $100 million that could have paid for more buses, more teachers, um, allow for interventions to help students that may need mental health, may have mental health needs. Um, so we haven't tackled that first end yet before we start talking about school choice. I think school choice is a way to allow people to not be responsible for the fact that they have failed public schools for so long. Uh, we just change the conversation instead of talking about why, is our, why are our public schools so underfunded. So we got two issues kind of going on here. You're saying support public schools more, give them more money, but people also want alternatives. Where do you stand? You mentioned funding. Why is funding to you a problem? Because like uh, Representative Jarvis said, for decades, uh, Mississippi has under underfunded public education pretty much its in entirety since uh, education came into existence. Now in 1997, they passed the MAEP funding formula for it, but it's only been fully funded one time. And after it was fully funded, and that was during an election year, after it was fully funded, they started cutting year after year after year. And so the little bit of money that you did get for a boost for that little bit of time, it was already stripped right back. Just like right now, the state has, I think the governor has cut uh, the state budget for education twice already and just did another unilateral cut about a month ago in mid-year. And so it's very difficult for the services that children really need to be provided to them without resources. I mean, you can't hire a reading coach if you don't have the money to do it. You can't have the social workers and the nurses and all those other wraparound services that are drastically needed because the real problem in Mississippi is poverty. And for the most part, we don't want to address it. That is something that people just ignore. Anytime you have children in stricken poverty, they're going to start school not on the same level, and it takes more resources to get them caught up for the most part. Now, in talking about funding, we've got a lawsuit that is uh, that says that the funding mechanism right now is unconstitutional because it's taking money away from public schools. Your feeling about that, Jarvis? Well, I think the lawsuit is appropriate. What you, what you have with our charter school program right now is charter schools are able to draw local dollars, our property taxes that we pay here in Jackson or in Hines County. They go to a private company and they're able to use it and there's no, um, the citizens of Jackson or Hines County do not have any um, supervision of that spending and neither does the State Department of Education. So you set up a separate school district that isn't accountable to any of the voters who are paying these taxes. So that's directly in conflict with the Constitution. Marilyn, your feelings? I agree 
The same, same difference. I mean, no accountability is there. In local school districts, you do have a local school board that the community elect to represent them. So if you have problems, you have a representative that you can talk to inside of the charter process. The only thing that's public about it is it uses public taxpayers' money. And you don't have any say so, and that's not appropriate. In terms of looking at taxpayer dollars, you have um, other states that are funding charter schools. How are they doing it? I'm not sure how other states are doing it, but I know one that I visited in particular up in Philadelphia, uh, their school has a lot of other systems in place. They do foundations, grants, and other things, and sponsorships that help keep their school system going. But I'm not sure how all of them are funded, but I just know that Mississippi law is a little bit different from other states. But Jarvis, you did mention that there are states that do add money to it. Yeah, there are some states that even uh, use lottery funds for it. And most of these other states, you also see more local control, even if they do have charter schools. In Mississippi, we set up a program where the control is just stripped away from local, local voters and local taxpayers. But what about the money following the child? Do you agree with that? Because that's actually what's happening? I don't agree with it simply because the state is not providing enough money for the traditional public schools. If they want to fund charter schools, I can, if you fund them, but you should also fund the traditional public schools because they are the first responsibility to us, the traditional public schools, but they're not, the state is not doing that. And this is another way to divert funds uh, from that. Yeah, and when, take the first year of the charter schools here in Jackson, you had two schools set up and about 250 students, maybe a little less than that. That was just from local taxpayers. JPS had to write a check for about $600,000 to those two schools. And if JPS still had 28,000 students to take care of, so they still had the same amount of buses, same amount of air conditioning, they had to uh, provide students, same amount of teachers. Their costs did not go down for those 250 students, but they lost $600,000. So you're really hurting the entire school district uh, and it's great, maybe great for those 250 students, but there's still 28,000 in Jackson that are not getting the services that they need. Now, Jarvis, isn't that how the law was written, though? Yeah, that's that exactly is. how the law was written. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the state is getting what they wanted, but it's not appropriate for, if, you, if you're if you actually caring about all of the students in Jackson and want to see all of them have the opportunity to su succeed, you should um, put together a law or a program that benefits everyone. So do you take this back to the legislature and have lawmakers revisit it? Well, the thing about Mississippi is a lot of the times it does take lawsuits for us to get change. You know, um, mental health is being sued by the feds now. We've had DHS sued. Um, sometimes our legislature is so hard-headed that we don't want to uh, enact change unless we're, you know, it's dictated from the courts. So maybe this is an opportunity for us to address it. I hope that lawmakers from other parts of the state will talk with Jackson lawmakers because this is where the schools are being set up at. So we should have some influence on how these um, programs are set up. Now there's a lawsuit that has joined in support of charter schools. The parents say they love the schools that their uh, children are at now. So have you had an opportunity to visit a charter school and see what's happening in the classroom? I've had an opportunity to speak at Midtown and um, talk to the entire, um, I think, fifth grade class. Um, I'm happy for those students. You know, I want all of those students to succeed. It's not that I don't want them to have that opportunity. I want the other 28,000 students to have that same opportunity. And if you're, I can't look out just for that small minority of the students in my job. My job should be what helps the entire district. And I represent both JPS and Hines County in the legislature. So the new charter school bill that we passed this year will actually allow students in Hines County to go to a charter school in Jackson and that money will come out of Hines County. And that's gonna hurt families in Utica, that's gonna hurt families in Raymond, that's gonna hurt families in Byron and Terry because they're gonna be losing money. Marilyn, have you visited a charter school? I have not, not the ones here in Mississippi. I have not had an opportunity uh, to visit them, but I have been an uh, integral part of the charter school authorizes board's meeting. Uh, we try to monitor those and send out reports about what's going on there so the community and other constituents will hear uh, that, that have, do not have the opportunity 
uh, to attend the charter school board meetings. What do you think about the authorizing board? Do you think they're doing a good job? I think they are doing a good job. They have some really strong uh, values on there, uh, but there are some times where you can see the contentions uh, between the ones that are pro-charter versus the ones that are for the traditional public school. And they have some very rigorous standards, and they're clear that they want to be able to provide quality charters if they're going to be here. But at the same time, you do have a couple of board members that advocate very hard for charters. We want them, uh, when they first initially started, they wanted to open 15 to 16 charters per year. And they just didn't think that was feasible for them to manage being able to start up. Uh, but what they found when they started submitting applications that a lot of people were submitting application but did not have the qualification uh, to be able to actually run schools. And the other thing that they looked at in great detail was some of those states that already had charter schools, how would the students perform in there in the charter school versus the traditional public school? And so that was one of the things that happened last month when they denied the charters. They saw clearly in evidence in the data that those charters that were trying to come here were not doing well. And some of them had mixed views in terms of test data, but for the most part, they did not outperform the traditional charter, I mean, public school. So the way that the state now is funding education, can we support charter schools effectively well, and support public schools? Well, and she mentioned it, that there is no evidence that charter schools do better than public schools. Um, we had our first apples to apples comparison between charters and public schools this year. And the schools in Jackson, the charter schools in Jackson score lower than most of the public schools in Jackson. And that's nothing against those charters, but we have to take on education in a holistic fashion. We gotta look at poverty, we've gotta look at the problems that these kids are bringing in the class, we gotta look at the entire neighborhood. Um, charter schools to me is just a distraction from all of the other issues that we have in Mississippi. And the other thing, um, if charters are so great and the things that you're doing there, why can't we do them in the traditional public schools? Release some of the restrictions that you have on the traditional public schools and allow them to teach and do the innovation and maybe we shouldn't worry so much about a test. We could really get back to critical thinking skills and all of the things that was there when I was coming up in school. But they are so focused, the teachers are so focused and have to be concerned about how their test data is gonna come out because it could possibly mean you might be unemployed. And I don't think that's fair uh, for a teacher to teach and have to go through uh, that type of pressure all year long about whether or not the children are where they need to be and that my job is on the line because of that. Well, in the charter schools, you, they don't have to worry about that. In the charter schools, they don't have to worry about all their teachers being certified. And we have to be concerned about that because in the public school, they want all teachers highly qualified and highly certified before they go before a student. And the charter school is not so. So in areas where we have teacher shortages, that's a major problem for finding certified and highly qualified. In addition to the state of Mississippi pretty much controls a teacher's salary. We have a pay scale that we have to uh, submit to. If we have more money in our district and we want to pay a teacher a little more, we can do something through a local supplement. But for the most part, to get quality math, science teachers, you're going to have to be able to at least uh, reach the southern regional average salary for a teacher. And that's something, you know, that um, in the traditional public school setting in terms of the legislators have not addressed. What do you want to see be the outcome of this lawsuit? How do you want to see it resolved? My hope would be that this lawsuit forces um, competing uh, members of the legislature to work together. Um, that if a judge finds as they should that this program violates the state constitution, that we have to answer that because we do have kids in these charter schools and we have kids in JPS that need us to actually work together to find a solution for them. Um, we haven't done that throughout the history of this state where we sit down and talk about all of the issues that affect education and affect education outcomes. So if a lawsuit can do that, 
I, um, I welcome it. And because we haven't had that on a host of issues in the legislature where we sit down and actually discuss these um, deep problems. More is more just this is what we're going to pass and you're going to take it. And so many people are just unhappy with that process. Marilyn? I just hope that the lawsuit uh, forces the legislator to do what they're obligated to do, and that's to give justice funding to all schools in the state of Mississippi, not just fund, fully fund MAEP, because when we looked at and had studies done on MAEP, which is the Mississippi Adequate Education Formula, the way of funding school, even though they have that formula and process, it only, when you graduate from 12th grade, is equivalent to an eighth grade education based on the funding. So we really need some justice funding, and we need to go back and look at all of these years that they have not funded uh, schools and the impact that it has had and see what we can do to remedy that. And as Jarvis said, I think it's very critical that we have to communicate with each other and not just go in and pass legislation and say, oh, we got the numbers, you take it. It doesn't work that way in a democracy. Say charter schools are here to stay. How would you like to see them funded? I would like to see them funded through the community. So what that means is, you know, local taxpayers still have a say in what their schools look like. I, I fully believe that the citizens of Jackson know what they need as far as schools or education. They should be the ones deciding what their schools look like. We need more after school programs in a, in a city like Jackson. We need more investment in wraparound services. Those are things that people on the ground know. And as a legislator, legislator, we're only there three months out of the year. So we shouldn't be dictating every single policy because we're not, we're not experts in this. I'm an attorney, but you know, mm -hmm. despite what people think about us, we don't know everything. We, most of us don't think we know everything, but we shouldn't be dictating everything from Jackson at the Capitol down to these local communities. We should allow them to have as much funding as we can give them. And that means stop cutting taxes when we don't need to cut taxes. That means actually investing in these areas and allowing local people to decide what their, their um, communities need. Still using uh, public school funding, though, for the charter schools? Well, I mean, to me, charter, charter public, as long as it's public input and people having actual, citizens having actual input on what their schools look like, I'm not concerned about what you call it. I'm concerned about who has control over what their schools look like. And when you have outside companies, outside foundations, people from other states coming to Mississippi, have lobbyists calling me at the Capitol saying, I have a group from Michigan that wants to set up charter schools. That, that's not the way it should be. We should have people in our community deciding what their schools look like. Marilyn? I agree. We need the accountability to stay at the local level. They need to be able to get the necessary funding they need from the state to run the schools. And if charter schools are here to stay, if they're going to be a uh, charter school, they need to follow the same rules that the traditional public school. They should be under the umbrella of Mississippi Department of Education, just like all the other school districts are, and they should be held accountable and to the same standards. We shouldn't have one get to start at 100 yards and, and we both have to make it to the finish line the same way. It's just an unfair process, and we really need to go back and relook at it, revamp it, and bring minds together and allow the community to say, as Javi was saying, what their needs are, and we be accountable to the people that elect us because, for the most part, they've done a real disservice uh, to public education, and they've created an environment to make it seem like traditional public schools are such a failure. Uh, their children are trapped inside of these schools where you help to set the trap, you know, and you have to be accountable, I think, uh, for those things that were done. Well, on that note, I want to thank you both, Marilyn Young with Southern Echo and Representative Jarvis Dorch for joining us today. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you for thank having you us. Thank you for having us.